2022 so far looks like the year of the financial Armageddon. Gas prices are skyrocketing to the moon. Stocks are falling off the cliff. My retirement funds are taking a bath. It seems like the only item that's not going up are the Costco hot dog and drink specials. But there's only so much I can eat of that. Ugh! How am I ever going to retire? Lang, help us! Whoa, 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 calm down, Hop Hop Bob. The good news about a down market is that there are many, many opportunities. The fact is, market downturn create more millionaires than any other time. You just have to be prepared to take advantage of the market condition and know what to do when the time comes. But one thing I do agree with you is that we never want to get caught in a situation when we're ready to retire but then have to continue to work because our stock investment have suffered a bear market decline due to market condition and therefore we can't retire. That's why we're talking about dividend stocks investment. There are usually three phases in an investment cycle. Accumulation phase is when an investor starts to learn the different investment strategies and consistently put away a portion of the earnings. The key in this phase is to start early, save consistently, let compounding growth work for you over time. The second phase is preservation. It's for investors nearing their retirement. It is important to evaluate risk tolerance level during this time and potentially take a less aggressive approach because there may not be enough time for recovery if the market takes a downturn. The last phase distribution is when you enjoy the fruits of your labor. When you decide to retire, you start withdrawing income from the various investments. The key here is to have a solid plan so you don't outlive your money. Dividend investment strategy checks off all the boxes. It can be a very good option to build a retirement passive income. When your portfolio has accumulated enough value, you can decide when to start the distribution phase without worrying about the market condition, whether we are in a downturn or a bear market. Let's dive right into dividend basics. What are dividends? Typically, for a larger and a more established blue chip companies, when they make profit, their board of director determines if there's sufficient profit to be shared with its eligible shareholders. Because they have a less need to spend money on the research and development, they are likely to share their profit with their shareholder. So the distribution of company's profit is called dividends. The distribution can be paid out on a monthly basis, quarterly, or yearly. And the payout can be in a form of cash or stock. For example, if the dividend is paid out in a form of cash, if dividend is $2.65 per share, and you own a thousand shares of a particular company stock, the distribution the company make out to you is $2,650. Another concept to understand is called dividend yield. Dividend yield is calculated based on the dividend payout amount divided by the stock price. In that same example, if the dividend payout is $2.65 per share and the company's stock is $23, then the dividend yield is 11.5%. One last thing to remember is the stock itself. The stock price can go up or down. Regardless the company pays dividends or not, the stock price fluctuates in the stock market as how it is traded by the investors. Now there are some dates to remember. The first one is called announcement date. When the board of director has approved that there are sufficient dividends to be paid out, they declare that they are paying dividends to its shareholders. 
X day stands for expiration date. This day is very important. You must own the stocks before this day in order for you to receive the dividend distribution. So you've got to check out when the X day is and then purchase the stock before that date. Record day is when the company documents which investors will receive the distribution because they actually own the shares of the stocks. And then finally, payment day is when the company actually makes the distribution to the eligible shareholders. Wow, Ling. So far, this sounds too good to be true. What are the downsides of following this dividend strategy? There are a few of them. The first one is dividend investment is a long-term income investing strategy. This is not a get-rich-quick overnight. In order to have a substantial amount of withdrawal during the retirement age and use dividends as a passive income source, you do need to accumulate a substantial amount of portfolio value. I will be showing you a specific example later on. The second risk is dividends are not guaranteed. The board of the director of the company makes a sole discretion on how much to pay out the dividends. And it could be more, it could be less, or the worst case scenario, they may totally remove the payout of the dividends. The next one is while the companies are paying out the dividends, their stock price may go up or down. This is related to your investment goals and objectives. If your goal is to invest in the stocks so that you can generate enough of the dividends to supplement your retirement income, then you may not worry too much about stock appreciation growth. And what you will focus on is whether these stocks will demonstrate a dividend growth year over year. Next one is expense ratio. You always wanted to pay attention to the expense ratio because the higher the expense, the lower the return that you get to keep in your pocket. And lastly, tax liability. Like any other investment, there is always tax liabilities if you hold the stock less than 60 days, you will pay ordinary tax based on your income bracket. If you hold the stock for longer than 60 days, you will then pay long-term capital gain tax. And if you invest the dividend stocks within your Roth RA, Roth 401k, then you don't need to worry about the tax liabilities. All right, I'm sold. It sounds like this is an investment strategy we can add into our portfolio. What plan do you have for us, Ling? I do think dividend investment strategy fits into our overall investment objectives. I don't want it to put all of our eggs in one basket, but I do think a portion of our passive income should come from dividend stocks. So here's what I'm planning on doing. I would like to make $50,000 per year passive income from dividend stocks, which means I will need to start accumulating a number of dividend stocks. I don't know how many, nor do I know how much the portfolio value is, but my goal is to make $50,000 per year passive income when I start retiring. And when I start withdrawing the money, I would like to minimize as much tax liability as possible. Next, I prefer not to invest in a lump sum. Even though I am planning on spending 150,000 in capital to purchase these dividend stocks. It's starting to look like we are about to enter into a great opportunity to buy value stocks in 2022 and 2023. So, I do hope within the next couple of years I can do my due diligence and research the healthy and sound companies to purchase into and start setting up my portfolio. And next, diversification is important. As I mentioned earlier, at this point, I don't know how many stocks I will be purchasing, nor do I know the different sectors I will be buying into. 
However, after my due diligence, I will be reporting out my journey and I will share everything I am doing. And lastly, the duration of this journey is going to be 10 to 15 years because that's how long before I will retire. When I start looking into the different stocks to potentially purchase, Abbevie is one of the stocks that I looked into. The ticker symbol is ABBV. When you go on to Yahoo Finance, there are many important information that this, this page gives you. If you look at the forward dividend and the EO section, you will find out the dividend payout is $5.64, which means for each share that you own Abbevie, the company will pay you $5.64 per year dividends. This is as of June 17th data. So I did a quick math. Assuming my entire portfolio only has Abbevie stock, in order to generate $50,000 in passive income, that would mean I need to own 8,865 shares of the stock. And based on June 17th closing stock price of $138.28, it would cost me $1,225,886 to own 88.65 shares of the stock. This obviously is not a good execution plan. So let me recap on my next steps on what I'm planning on doing to get this journey started. First, I'm going to use either my Roth 401k or Roth IRA account to minimize tax liabilities. Next, I will identify a number of different dividend stocks for diversification purposes, and they will need to come from different sectors. I give myself 5 to 15 years to accumulate this portfolio. If the earlier I'm able to accomplish the 50000 per year, then the earlier I'm able to retire. The next task is critical, to identify healthy quality companies, which has at least 10 year dividend paying history and a track record of continuous dividend growth. The payout ratio, I'm not sure exactly what that percentage is. I do need to do my due diligence to identify these companies. For this portfolio, I'm less concerned about the stock value appreciation, but focus more on dividend growth. As long as these are healthy, quality companies that will continue to pay dividends, then I have accomplished my goal. And my initial capital investment will be 150000 And lastly, I would like to have an entry point within the next two years. Wow, very exciting information, Ling. Stay tuned, folks, as Ling will be following the execution plan she outlined here and keep you all posted on the progress that she's making. Remember, most people don't plan to fail, but rather fail to plan. The time to prepare for your financial future is now. Before you know it, tomorrow will be here. Let's go! I hope all of you enjoyed watching this video on dividends. If you find this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, and share with anyone who may also benefit from this knowledge. See you all very soon. Bye!